Thank you, Luke. Wow, it's great to be here. It's great to see all of you. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Uh, my name is John Hodges. I'm the new Minister of Worship and Communications here at Northside, and uh, I'm excited to experience my first Engage service tonight. Um, I've been looking forward to this moment um, since I heard about it uh, several months ago. And I think you have something very special here. I want to thank uh, Luke Perkins, Nick Galtney, Brandon Largent, Jack Reese, um, Megan Petrosky, Rusty Baskin, Jerry Owens, and his wife Brianna, and all those who've been involved in the Engage ministry. And in a few minutes, we're going to hear a special message from Ben Crane. These folks have put in countless hours working tirelessly to prepare for this service tonight. Why would they do that? I'm just getting to know them. Some of you know them uh, much better than I do. But it's clear to me that they believe in this ministry. They have been uniquely gifted by God, and they are passionate about using those gifts to bring glory to the name of the Lord. I've seen that, and I think you will too. I love their hearts. And while I get to experience the service tonight as a fellow worshiper with all of you, I can't wait to work alongside this talented team in the future. I look forward to partnering with them, and I'm excited to see what God has in store for Engage. Tonight, we gather to praise the Lord of all creation, to lift up the name that is above all names. As we pray in the Lord's Prayer, may your kingdom come, Father. We live in a world full of hatred and fear, sickness and loss, pain and heartache. Sometimes it just seems overwhelming. This has been a tough year, and it's not over. We miss being together. We long for a time when we don't have to wear masks. We long for a time without wildfires and hurricanes and pandemics. We long for a time when people aren't killing each other because of the color of their skin. We long for a time when we're not lonely and discouraged. We long for a time. A time when the reign of God spreads across the earth. A time when the kingdom of God is near. That time is coming and has now come. We are part of a grand story the story of God's love for all creation. I heard someone say today that we are not the protagonists in this story. We want to see ourselves the protagonists, don't we? We can't seem to keep ourselves from taking matters into our own hands, but no matter how hard we try, we keep messing it up. But God demonstrated his love for us in this while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. God is the protagonist of this story. This is God's story. And tonight, we invite God to step in, to make himself known, to reveal his will. We ask God to pour out his spirit over us and fill this place, to open our eyes and ears and hearts to become more aware of the extraordinary things God is doing so that we can join him in bringing hope and life and love to this world. Let's stand together. Would you join me as we pray the Lord's Prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's worship the Lord together. See you. 
darker. <laughs> I can see little words. Uh, hey, let's all stand up for this one. We're about to ask God uh, to build his kingdom here. And this is a song that even if you don't know the words to sing, you can definitely dance and clap. So let's, uh, let's sing Build Your Kingdom Here. After, after a brief uh, technical difficulty interlude. Because we need to be able to hear Megan sing. Am I right? It is now. I'm going to check. Check it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire in our very souls. your power. Dumb first, we hunger, we hunger and we thirst. Refuse to waste our lives for your our joy and prize. To see the captive's hearts released, the hurt, the sick, the Come on, let's sing, build your kingdom. Build your kingdom here. Let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand. Heal our streets and land. Set your church on.
mighty hand. Heal our streets and land. Come on. God, build your kingdom here. Let's build it. Um, okay, so I'm going to talk for a minute. Everyone can go ahead and have a seat. Uh, I'm going to talk about the next uh, two songs we have. And we've just talked about asking God to come and step in and make a difference. And what I want to talk about, as soon as I catch my breath... is talking about who God is. And that's what the next two songs are going to be about. 2020 has been a really chaotic year. And it's, uh, it's affected everybody differently. Uh, for some people, when I say that, you know, it's like a little bit of a joke. Maybe your life hasn't changed much, or maybe you just see that it's kind of ridiculous and we'll get through it. Or maybe you've seen good things come out of this. But uh, I know from talking to a lot of people that some of you are seeing a lot of hurt and experiencing a lot of hurt and experiencing loneliness and uncertainty and that this is not a good time for you. I wanted to share uh, one thing that, I, that I've learned about God, and, and just to go down a, a quick rabbit hole and just share my own experience. Uh, I've really, all things considered, I've been doing okay. I've been doing really well. Um, it's weird. I've, I haven't felt the spirit to go and just like listen to lots of worship music like I usually do. And for some reason for me, it's been, my, my faith has been diverted to just want to dig and learn more. And I've been taking an online uh, class on uh, the creation story on Genesis, uh, on Genesis 1 and 2. And so I, I wanted to share something that I think I've learned uh, new about God. Genesis uh, 1 verses 1 and 2 it starts like this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void. And darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. If you reread that verse 2, it just kind of paints a picture of a dark chaotic, uncertain environment. But we see right there, even from the beginning, the spirit of the God, the spirit of God was over the waters. And back then in, in ancient uh, Near Eastern cultures and where the authors of the Bible would have been, the waters were just like a scary thing. When they write, when they write about the waters, it's a scary, chaotic thing. Um, they don't have like submarines and cameras. And they, don't, they didn't know, like, what was in the ocean. I still think the ocean can be really terrifying, but they just, that was, that was the, uh, that was how they summarized chaos and uncertainty, is they said the waters. And that's what, that's where God starts in the creation story. You see, because our God has always been a God of bringing order out of chaos, He's brought life from chaos, from the very, very beginning. In day one, he separates the light from that darkness that we talked about. He separates the skies in day two from the waters that we talked about. And then on day three, he brings dry land out of the waters. He's bringing life. Well, he hasn't brought life yet. He's bringing order out of chaos. In day four, he, he gives us the sun, moon, and stars 
it's a parallel to day one, by the way. He puts the sun, moon, and stars in the, in the light and the darkness that he had separated. And then he gives them a job to rule the day and the night. And he brings in uh, day five fish and birds to fill the sky and the waters that he had just separated on day two. And day six refers back to day three. He fills the land that he had just created with animals and creeping things and cattle and people. Our God brings life out of chaos. Our God brings order out of chaos. He's done this from the very, very beginning. He's doing this right now in this chaos. Now let's sing a couple of songs about who God is.
and sing your hair. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. You know. 
never stop working, you never stop, cause you're the way maker, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, and that is who you are, way maker. How's everybody doing? There we go. All right, uh, show of hands. Raise your hand if you like that song. Okay, good. <laughs> I am in love with this song right now. I mean, it is just so powerful. It's so beautiful. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. So I want to talk about God as a waymaker for just a few minutes tonight. Look at an example from scripture that stands out to me when, every time I sing this song. And then share a little personal story uh, that I think of as well. But I want, to, I want to start by asking you to take a minute and think back to the very first time you asked God to make a way for something in your life. So I'll think back as far as you can. Think back to the very first time you asked God to make a way for something in your life, and we'll come back to that in just a few minutes. So if, uh, if you're like me, you might have had an image that came into mind when you were singing that song. Uh, there's lots of great examples in Scripture, of course. Uh, maybe you thought about Jesus as the ultimate way maker, making a way for our, our path back to God and our relationship with the Father. Uh, but for me, I, I kind of like the dramatic scene of the waters parting in Exodus. Uh, and I had a lot of things to say. Luke said about half of them already. So that is the Holy Spirit working right there. So good job. Um, we'll get to that in, in a minute, though. <laughs> no, that's I it was awesome. I was telling Rachel, I was like, look at my notes. That's I have that on my notes right there. So, yeah. Um, so in the Exodus, we all, we all know this story pretty well, I think, but the Israelites have just made their way out of Egypt, and they, they end up at the Red Sea, and they really don't have any place to go. And Pharaoh knows that they don't have any place to go. He even says, 
that the wilderness has shut them in. And so when we look at where they are, they have wilderness on either side of them. They have Pharaoh and his army bearing down in front of them. And guess what they have behind them? Those chaotic waters. That's right. They've got those chaotic waters behind them. And of course, we know how the story goes. Moses lifts up his staff, stretches out his arm. God sends a wind to push the waters back to separate the waters. And they walk through on dry land with a a wall of water on their left and a wall of water on their right. And to us, this seems like a pretty awesome scene. Like, if you could go back in time, if you had a time machine, wouldn't you want to go back to this scene and be like, yeah, let's walk through the waters. That would be amazing. That sounds awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's been done in Hollywood. You see, like, the fish swimming through the, the waters as you walk by. That would be pretty cool. But, you know, I think to the people in that moment, it would have been absolutely terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Like Luke just said, their whole association with the waters was one of danger, possible death, uncertainty, and chaos. It represented chaos for them. If you go through the Old Testament, there's even examples of how chaotic waters come to be a metaphor for their enemies, for the people that they encounter that they don't know how to defeat. So we have God, the way maker, making a way, but it's not the way that they expect. And it's not the way that they want. It's kind of like God saying, hey, you know, um, you've always kind of been afraid of the water. You've never really understood the water. Uh, Yeah, and there was that time I sent the water and I killed everybody on earth. Don't, Don't worry about that, okay? Just put that aside for a minute. Trust me. I want you to walk through the water. I want you to walk into the chaos and trust me that it's gonna be okay. And they do. They take a step in faith in God and they find dry ground and of course we know they make it all the way across. All right, so here's, here's my personal story. Um, the very first time that I can remember asking God to make a way for something in my life was asking him to make a way for me to have a baby sister. So I'm the oldest in my family, and um, as long as I can remember, I really, really wanted a baby sister. I don't know why. I called my mom this week. I said, Mom, how, how old was I when I started asking for a baby sister? And she said, oh, you were about three years old? And I said, really? Like, so as, as long as I could talk and you know, form complete thoughts, I was asking for a baby sister. Now, what I didn't know at the time was that my parents were already trying to give me a baby sister, but uh, had been unsuccessful. So I prayed to God to make a way for me to have a baby sister. I wanted a baby sister. And I kept praying, and I kept praying. And it wasn't until after I turned six years old that my baby sister finally arrived. And I remember that day. Uh, I remember sitting in the waiting room with my grandparents, my aunt and uncle in Abilene, and I remember waiting and waiting and waiting (laughs) because my baby sister was still not ready to come join the family, evidently. But finally, someone came in, and they told us that she had arrived, and God had made a way for me to have a baby sister. That was the very first time that he was my way maker, my promise keeper, my light in the darkness. And that day was today, 35 years ago. So it's my little baby sister's birthday. Happy birthday, Kristen. I love you so much. <laughs> Layton wants more applause, please. <laughs> you know, we all have 
stories like this. We all have stories of a time that God made a way in our life when it didn't seem like there was a way. And I hope that tonight, like Luke has already said, I hope that tonight you will remember those times. Because we're living in a time right now when it feels like we're surrounded by the wilderness and a really bad option in front of us and a really terrible option behind us. And it just may be that God asks us to go into the chaos to make the way. Or it may be that God asks us to wait. I had to wait several years for my baby sister to come. But I kept praying and I kept believing that God was going to make that way and that eventually that prayer would be answered. Now, when I look at my life today, of course there's prayers that the answer has been no. But I can't think of a single time when I look back that God didn't make a way for whatever I needed. So God is going to make a way for us. Now, it's about how we respond, who we're going to be. All right, let's all stand for this one.
Oh. Uh. 
First, we thank you so much for bringing us back together and being present with us tonight as we worship to you. Lord, I uh, thank you for, for not abandoning, abandoning us, for not forsaking us through this long period of chaos that we've, that we've been living through. I, I pray that... Uh, for those who do feel abandoned, I pray that you speak comfort into those lives. Use us to bring, bring comfort in your love into those lives. Lord, I pray that you uh, keep us safe, uh, keep us well as we as we leave tonight and bring us back together soon. Uh, we thank you for Jesus and the life that he gave so that we can have life in you, so that we can become more like you here on this earth every day. I pray that you... Uh, Help us to never, never forget the awesomeness of that, that sacrifice and that gift. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for coming tonight. Uh, well, it's been a real blessing for me, and I hope it has been for each of you, too. Um, we have services uh, tomorrow morning. And I'm no weatherman, but in November, bring your light jackets. <laughs> Thanks and have a good night. <laughs>